I get questions about creating YouTube content with OBS a lot, and it's really easy to do. So today I'll show you how to set up OBS to be a recording studio for your YouTube videos. After this video, you're going to be able to capture the screen for tutorials, record studio talking head stuff, and even do green screen work. I'll also show you the best settings in OBS to get the highest quality video and audio possible. So let's get to it. If you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any new content. One thing you should understand is that recording with OBS does not mean content won't need to be edited. Ideally, when you're finished recording, you'll have a bunch of studio clips and some screen recordings that you can edit up and turn into an amazing video or awesome tutorial. So here's how you're gonna set up OBS to record your content. In order to get to settings, we're gonna go down here to the bottom right and we're gonna click on settings. And the first thing we're going to do is go to the video tab. This is gonna set the output for your recording size. Usually most people are going to have a 1920 by 1080 monitor and the output resolution is going to be 1920 by 1080. Your base canvas generally wants to be the size of your monitor, but I personally recommend to take as much pressure off the computer as you possibly can, having the base canvas and the output scaled resolution set the same. So I would generally set both of these to 1920 by 1080 irregardless of your monitor size. It's just less work that your computer has to do when it's going to output this. You can change your downscaling filter if you like from Bicubic. If you wanted to increase your video quality, you could change it to Langsos, but in my experience, I haven't really noticed a whole heck of a lot of difference when changing this. You're also gonna set the number of frames per second your output is going to be. So if you're just doing talking head videos or something like that, 30 frames per second is just fine. If you want that higher frame rate because you're doing video games or something like that, then set it to 60 frames per second. This is really dependent upon the type of content that you plan to release. Once you have these settings proper, you can click apply and then we're going to move to the output setting. And we're gonna change this to simple just so I can show you the difference between simple and advanced. In simple, we have recording path. And this tells OBS where to save your files. So you just click browse and you select a folder and you're good to go. Next you have recording quality and you probably if you're going to use simple just set this to high. You can also go to lossless. Just keep in mind that the file sizes are going to get larger the higher you go. And I've never really noticed too terribly much of a difference between high quality and the other settings. I always set my recording format at mp4 now this does introduce situations where if your computer somehow crashed, that file becomes totally unusable. So because of that, some people like to use FLV. Personally, I'll take my chances, I use MP4, just because most editors will accept that file. As far as encoders go on Simple, I always select NVIC because I have an NVIDIA video card. But if you do not, there might be an AMD setting in here. Uh, that would be the one I would choose. Otherwise, you have to go with software, the X264. Selecting X264 is going to increase how hard your CPU has to work to encode these files. So now that's the simple way to set it up. If you like, you can just use those settings. But I'm going to go into advanced because I want to show you the best settings. And we'll go up and we'll select record. And for type, standard is just fine. It's the default. Then you can set up your recording path. You have your record format, and here I select MP4 as well. Under encoder, once again, either your NVIDIA card, if you have an AMD card, you're gonna to wanna to select that. Otherwise, you're going to wanna to go ahead and select X264. Now down here under rate control, I like to have my rate control set to VBR. That is variable bit rate, and it means if there's more stuff happening on the screen, it will record at a higher bit rate. If there's less stuff happening on the screen, it can record at a lower bit rate. This tends to guarantee that my file sizes don't get too crazy big. For bit rate, I set it to 40,000 kilobits per second with the max at 60,000 kilobits per second. And I find this gives me the best quality video without the humongously massive file sizes. As far as keyframes go, I always leave it set to auto, but you can put this to two if you like. Some people like it that way. For me, I've never really noticed too much of a difference. I select max quality for the preset, 
and I find that this really does give me everything I need. But if your computer is struggling just a little bit and you lower it to quality or performance, you're probably not going to notice that much of a visual difference. So this might be the first place to go if your machine is struggling to keep up with your recording. Profile I have set to high. And then I have a look ahead selected and also psycho visual tuning. Now psycho visual tuning is something that you're definitely going to use if you have a lot of things moving around the screen or something like that. If you're doing video game recording or something, you're definitely going to want to have this checked. The GPU setting is something that you can change if you have more than one graphics card in your machine. You can select which graphics card you want to do the encoding for the recording. I only have one here so it's set to zero. And max B frames set to two is just fine. I wouldn't really mess with this too much. Now you should keep in mind that these are the settings that I would use for recording, but I'm not going to be live streaming when I record this. Chances are the machine would probably struggle if I was trying to encode a stream for live streaming and also record at this bitrate. So this is strictly for recording videos on your OBS, not for streaming and recording at the same time. So keep that in mind. These are high-end settings because we want the best quality recording that we can get. So click apply and then okay. And the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to set up a scene. So the way that OBS works is you can set up different scenes and each scene can have completely different elements in them, and you can change those scenes just by selecting one scene over the other. So if I go from scene one, which is currently empty, to scene two, you can see that I have some elements in scene two, and they come up. Then I switch back to scene one, and there are no elements. So we're going to add a camera here into scene one, and to do that, we're going to go to sources and click the little plus button, and we're going to go to video capture device and I'm going to just call this device camera and click OK. Then I'm gonna to go to devices. I'm gonna drop that down and select cam link. This is my DSLR. It's gonna give me the best quality picture. If I wanted to configure that even further, and this is especially important if you're using a webcam, I can click on configure video. And this brings up some other camera options. So I can adjust the brightness, the contrast, the hue, the saturation. If you're using a webcam, you may have a lot more of these options available to you. You can adjust these in any way you want to make your camera look better. And I highly recommend that you look into doing that if you're using a webcam. To set the resolution type, it, you can use default, but I'm going to go ahead and drop that down and I'm going to select custom. Then I'm going to set my resolution for my camera at 1920 by 1080. And I'm going to scroll this down to the bottom and I'm going to select use custom audio device. And scrolling down a little further, I want the digital audio device cam link selected. That's the microphone that's actually hooked up to my DSLR. But you might have the microphone for your webcam or something like that that you might select here. Just be sure you actually select an audio device, otherwise your video will not have any audio when you go to record it. Once we've done that, all we need to do is click OK. And there we go. You can see my picture is showing up from the webcam. You can also see under the audio mixer that my camera is there with the audio. So if I just wanted to do a talking headpiece, all I have to do is click start recording and it's going to record to the hard drive in the folder that I set up in settings. So maybe you plan to record some tutorials and to do this, you wanna take screen captures of things that are going on on your computer. This is really easy with OBS. The first thing you might wanna do is add a microphone so you can add voiceover to this. So we're going to go to an empty scene and we're going to click plus on the sources. We're going to select audio input capture and I'm gonna call this microphone and click okay. Now I'm gonna drop it down and select the microphone I want. In this case, I'm gonna just take the microphone off my DSLR, the best quality microphone I have. Then I'm gonna click okay. And now you can see under audio mixer, my microphone is there. I can adjust the volume so my voiceover isn't too loud or too soft. Now all we're gonna have to do is add the application that we wanna record. There are a bunch of ways to do this. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click the plus and we're going to go into display capture and I'm going to capture my display. I have two different ones. We're going to capture display number two and you can see that this display is really not the same size as my main canvas. And I would never do this, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I just wanna show you how to use it. So I'm going to stretch this display by right clicking, going to transform 
and then stretching it to the screen. Once I do that, I can open an application like Premiere Pro right here. I can put it on that window and I can record all the actions and movements that I'm taking. And I can voice it over at the exact same time. That's really awesome. The next one we're gonna do is a window capture. We click the plus under sources again. We're going to select window capture and you can call this window capture whatever you want. I'm just gonna call it PR and click OK. And any windows that you currently have open on your computer are going to show up here. So if you don't have the window maximized, it's not going to show up. Just keep that in mind. Now under window, I just select the window that I wanna use. In this case, my Premiere Pro window, I can click OK. And once again, since this is on a smaller monitor, it looks kind of goofy, but I can just stretch it to the full screen. That's no problem. I just go to transform and stretch to screen. And there you go. Anything I do in that application is going to be recorded in OBS and I can voice over at the exact same time. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to record a browser source. Let's say you wanted to give a demo on how to do your analytics on YouTube. Well, all you have to do is go and get the URL that you want to show and you just paste it in the URL section and then change the width and height so it matches your canvas and click OK. Now you're going to see the browser window come up. Let's say you actually wanted to control this browser window. You just right click and you select interact and now you can control your browser source right from this little interaction window. Chances are the better way to do it is just to do a window capture for your browser and use it in its native way right in the browser. But again, this is all about giving you options. Once again, anytime you have your source up, all you need to do is click start recording and it's going to record it to that location on your hard drive. It's really that easy. Now I'm gonna show you how to do green screen work. So if you ever wanna put yourself in a completely different background, wherever you wanna be, it's really easy to add that to a video in OBS. So we have our empty scene here. The first thing we're gonna do is click the plus under sources and we're going to go to video capture device. I'm gonna add my camera. And this is the same process as we've used before. I just select my camera and I'm going to change the resolution so it is 1920 by 1080. And I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom and I'm gonna add my microphone as well. Use custom audio device and then select the microphone I want. Then I'm gonna click OK. And you can see I am using a portable green screen, so we have some bits around the edges that just don't line up. So I'm going to use the Alt key, and then I'm going to drag these edges so they basically remove anything that's not green screen from the background. And you can see that the main thing that you wanna do when you're doing green screen work is make sure that the entirety of the screen is the same color. It doesn't have to be super bright, it just has to be the same color. And you don't wanna be casting shadows on your green screen. So what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of moving around a reflector to try to take away most of my shadow. You can see I still have a little bit of shadow here, but that is the beauty of OBS's green screen application. It's pretty compliant. I don't think it's gonna to worry too much about that little shadow moving around, but I'm not sure until we set it up. So next, I'm going to add my background scene. I'm gonna click the plus in sources and go to media source. And I'm just gonna click okay here and we're going to browse to a local file that we're gonna use as our media source. And it's just a fun short little video. I'm gonna click loop so it loops around and we don't have to worry about it going away. And I'm gonna click okay. And here is my video clip. Now I'm just gonna move it below my camera. So you can see it's behind there. All we have to do is remove the green screen. It'll look just like I'm sitting in the middle of the city street. So I'm gonna right click on my camera and I'm gonna go to filters. Now under effect filters, I'm gonna click the plus and go to chroma key. I'm gonna click okay. Now we can see kind of what we're getting and you want that green screen to be gray. So I'm gonna adjust the contrast a little bit and then I'm gonna adjust this similarity up at the top to try to get my screen as gray as possible. Now I'm gonna move this over and you can see, we've got a little bit of ghosting on my shirt. It's seeing through the shirt and we don't want that. It's also seeing through my hair. So we're gonna adjust the similarity down until we don't have that problem. And there we go, that looks almost perfect. Now, even when I move around, we're not getting ghosting or any problems and you can see even that shadow is not showing up or giving us issues. So this looks really, really great. 
Now I could just press record and start recording with this, but I think I want to adjust my camera just a little more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my camera again, and I'm going to go to filters. And now I'm going to click the plus under effect filters, and I'm going to add some color correction. And what I'm going to try to do is just make my skin tones look more correct. So I'm going to adjust the saturation down a little bit because I'm nowhere near that orange. And I want to adjust the brightness down a little bit as well. And then when I click OK, there we go. We have a much better look to my scene, although you can tell it's hot in here. But it is what it is. Now when I move my hand around quickly, you're going to see that this is not a perfect solution. You get a little bit of green edging around my hand, especially when I move it fast and you're gonna pretty much get this on just about any application that you use. But if you just wanna do a fun little segment of a video where you're showing yourself in a fun location, man, this is really super easy. At this point, you can see how easy it is to create all kinds of fun and creative content with OBS Studio. And OBS Studio is totally free. Maybe you've been using OBS Studio for a long time to go live and you didn't even know that you could actually record your videos with it. Well now you know, and if you want to know how to add guests to your live stream using OBS, you should check this video out right here. If you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.